But for a start here, we need to create something. What do we need to create? A container database. Because we can't convert your current non-CDB into a container database. That does not work. We can convert your non-CDB then later into a pluggable database. But we need a container database first, so you need to create it. Now you could be one of the brave ones and say, I do it all command line. Then you make sure that you use this enable pluggable database statement, part of the create database statement. But we rather would like to recommend you using the DBCA. Makes life easier. By default, it's ticked on create as a container database. And when you follow this advice, you get a container database. By default, it will have the character set AL32 UTF-8. And this is also a strong recommendation because since 12.201, this allows you to plug in now non-CDBs as new pluggable databases with various character sets. So you can mix. One of your new PDBs could be uh, Western European 8859P15. The next one could be Western European MSWIN 1252 and so on. So you can mix all the variety of character sets as long as your root container is AL32 UTF-8. And this is also the default. So just keep that. Then your container database by default since 12201 will be created with local undo. So you see it on the screenshot, the box is also ticked on. If you would like to change the local undo by yourself, you need to bring the database into startup upgrade mode. Why do we strongly recommend local undo? Local undo is the requirement for all these cool features we have since 12.2. Hot cloning, flashback global database, and much, much more. And we will highlight some of these features today as well. Another thing to consider is compatible. Compatible should be always the default of the release. For 19C, that means the default compatible setting is 19.00. So when you create with DBCA a container database, it will have compatible 19.00. Three numbers, leave it like that. There's no need for a fourth or a fifth number, even though you could set it. And don't set 19.1 or 19.3 or 19.6 or whatever. That just gives you trouble. Also, the typical question, should we increase compatible when we apply a patch, a release upgrade? No, never. Ah, never with a footnote. There was an exception in 1910 when you would like to use a new feature which required that you change compatible, but do this only if you can change them compatible in your entire landscape. So keep compatible always the same in the release you're using. Don't have one database in 19C with compatible 19.3. Oh, the next one with 19.00. This just gives you trouble because when you unplug and plug, you need to be aware of the silent compatible change. In the example here, we have a pluggable database and it's in a container database where compatible is set 12.201. Now I unplug it and I plug it into a container database where compatible is 19.00. That works fine. When you study the alert look, you will find out, oh, there's a silent compatible change. I didn't do that. It happens because all PDBs will automatically adopt the compatible setting of the CDB dollar root. But now you see where this becomes tricky because if this would be now 19.00 and 19.10, I couldn't plug backwards anymore even though both are 19C container databases. So compatible, keep it equal in your environments for the release and just the default value. 